அஸ்லாம் வலைக்கம் இந்த நேம் ஆஃப் காட் மோஸ்ட் கிரேஷியஸ் மோஸ்ட் மெர்சிஃபுல் மை நேம் இஸ் சுராயா டீன் திஸ் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் ஃப்ரம் ஃபோர் டு ஃபைவ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு பி டாக்கிங் அபவுட் சம் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் திங்ஸ் ஐம் கோயிங் டு ஷேர் வித் யூ சம் ஸ்கில்ஸ் தட் வில் எக்ஸ்பேண்ட் யுவர் திங்கிங் அண்ட் கிவ் யூ நியூ ஸ்கில் செட் டு டு த்ரைவ் இன் திஸ் சேலஞ்சிங் வேர்ல்ட் வே ஆர் எஸ் அ கம்யூனிட்டி Uh, we are crying to be heard to be understood from new york to california we are asking to be heard that we muslims be portrayed not uh, just in a positive light but in an accurate light prophet muhammad said kindness is a mark of faith and those of you who are not kind have no faith my goal in this hour is to share with you and to inspire you uh, with some facts and some skills that we can incorporate into our daily living so that we can go out there and connect and connect to our greatness um i have an author recently i wrote a book called peace matters in this book i inspire mothers to take a leading role in promoting peace in our homes we all know that there can be no peace in the world unless there is peace at home So what I I want to begin by asking you the challenges that you might be facing because it's something for me to stand here and tell you 10 things but all I it, I can serve you better if you can call us and give me your questions and challenges. Um uh, what we are going to cover today is how we can communicate. When the prophet said kindness is a mark of faith, he just he did not just only mean being kind in words. he meant also being kind in action so today my focus is going to be about how we can be kind with our words the journey to kindness begins with you often times we can say to someone that person was not nice to me or that person was mean to me therefore i had to but today we are going to talk about not going there anymore it's about taking personal responsibility what do you stand for uh, how do you want to be seen uh, as a person as a muslim how do you want to relate to the people you come across how do you want to uh, show up in the lives of your children so i'm answering all these questions i believe that the journey to peace making the journey to communicating without blame and shame the journey to showing up as our greater self rest is within us so let's talk about what is it that we don't do right uh, i think we belong to dominant cultures there's always a blame and a judgment and an evaluation of everybody uh, today i want to empower you to move away from that judgment to mo- to move away from that blame to move away from that evaluation we typically make of others uh, how do we know we are Uh, making these judgments and evaluations uh, i think uh, it is our tendency to really number one would be to deny responsibility uh, when we deny responsibility for what is happening around us it is very easy to blame someone else so in this journey of being kind in this journey of being connecting to one another we need to uh, take responsibility not just to what we do but what we say what we think and our words are very crucial uh, i'm sure you'll agree with me that communication is at the heart of everything we do uh, so how we communicate uh, what we say is very important for us to stay connected uh, with people so as you can see um, i would love to hear from you make your calls the number is appearing right uh, below the screen Uh, give us a call and talk to me about the challenges that you have uh, in your personal life in your pr- professional life and in your community uh, what uh, what needs to be addressed and how we can move forward so that we can build a community where uh, as the prophet saw where we all get together and we celebrate every one of us we are all creation of allah so we have to celebrate every person every human being Uh, this afternoon i spoke also about denying responsibility that's the number one uh, 
that's a number one goal for us to move away from denying responsibility. So when we deny responsibility, uh, what we are saying is we're blaming someone else. What we really need to do is take a step back and ask, what is it that I am doing? What is it that I can do different? The second D that uh, really shifts the blame is that the fact that we diagnose people. It's one of the most easiest thing to do. Uh, it's so easy to say that someone is bad, someone is lazy, someone is not good enough. Uh, how many times do we do that? I mean, we all do that at some point. So when we move away from the denial of responsibility and when we are aware that we are really diagnosing people, uh, we can come uh, to a, con con a communication with an open heart. That's very vital. Uh, uh, there, was, th there was a time when the prophet uh, was asked uh, uh, and he replied, no companion of mine should tell me anything bad about another person. For when I meet you, I would like my heart to be clean. So to have that clean heart, remember, we have to move away from the four Ds. I spoke to you about two. One was denying responsibility. Second was diagnosing people. And the third is when we begin to use deserve language. Oftentimes, we can get into that mess where we say, oh, somebody deserves it because that person didn't do something. Now look at how the way we approach life. We have what we call uh, value judgments. There are values we have in life. And when those values are not met, we make moralistic judgments. So when we uh, are not happy with our needs not being met, it's so easy for us to go and judge people and say, uh, so and so deserves it because he is that or he is this. The fourth D uh, I want to share with you is uh, to be to move away from making demands. How do we do that? Now, what is a demand? Uh, a demand is not a request. Certainly, it's not a request. And I know I, I'm really missing. Usually, when I speak, I speak to an audience and. Uh, I'm speaking to you uh, today over the TV and I don't see you and I miss that. But if you do see me and if you hear me, I want you to give us a call. Yes, I am getting a call. Hello, this is Soraya. Okay. So, yeah, so the fourth D that I want, uh, I want to inspire you to have in your life, in your toolkit of how to communicate kindly with people is to remember not to make demands. Now, what is the difference between a demand and a request? Sometimes we could say, could you please do that? And it might sound like a request, but in fact, it is a demand. How do you know that? Because when you make a demand from someone, you are wanting that person to comply right away. You are wanting that person to do it what you want them to do the way you want it done. And then if the person does not comply, it's very easy to, for us to make that person feel blamed, uh, to shame, uh, and to make that person feel guilty. Um, so, let's, uh, so let's then I, uh, talk about the four Ds that we should be, move away from. When we move away from these four Ds, remember, we can communicate with kindness. Communicate in a way that we can connect with one another. So the four Ds, again, would be to move away from denying our responsibility in the communication, in the action, or in the interaction. Telling people, telling people that they deserve things or value. The fourth is we want to move away from making demands. So when we are able to do these four to begin with, now remember, this is not easy. It's like learning a new language because we belong to dominant cultures and from a very early age, we are told how to judge and how to blame and how to evaluate. So this is like learning a new language. Um, I mean, nobody gets there to perfect it. But what I can assure you is, if you practice these skills on a daily basis, you will arrive at a place where you are aware. You are aware. You are aware of who you are. You are aware. You are kind of watching what you are saying. You are kind of observing what you are saying. So that's our goal. We want to get there where we are very mindful about what we are saying. 
So later this in this hour, in, in, uh, in the next half an hour, I will be talking uh, with a peace from Palestine, Itaf Awad, who has braved all kinds of challenges. Challenges that I might take for granted, who has braved all kinds of challenges to promote peace, not just to promote peace, to be the peace. So she will share with you powerful nuggets about how to listen uh, when somebody is putting you down, how to listen uh, when somebody is not being very nice to you, when somebody made life wonderful for you. So I stay tuned in uh, in the last half of the hour. Award, a Palestinian peacemaker who we have the privilege uh, with us in this video today. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, we spoke about ODs of dysfunctionality. Uh, we don't want to use this style of communication because then we can't go back to being kind. Remember the prophet said, you are not kind, he is not having any faith. So as a Muslim, it is very important we be kind. As a Muslim, it's very important that we initiate that kindness. Uh, it's not for us to say, someone else has to be kind. No, no. You have to be kind first. You have to lead by example. You have to start it. Yes. Uh, that, that's about that. When we get away from the four Ds, uh, and I'm, I'm confident as we move along every Sunday when I get an opportunity to talk with you, and when I'm able to take your questions, and we can, we can really get to the heart of what is troubling you, when we can really get to the heart of what is bothering you, we can come at, sol at solutions. Remember, as I said, communication is at the heart of everything we do and how we communicate is crucial. How we communicate will depend on whether we can be connected to someone or whether we can be disconnected to somebody. So my focus today is to share with you the connection. That is crucial. Look at the world today. I mean, people are just not getting along. Why? Because to begin with, we don't know one another. And when we get to know one another, we don't say kind things to one another. Um, and we don't be begin with an intention. We have to have this intention, the Iman, to, to have that intention, to hold it, so that I, am, I have an intention to have a perfect conversation with this brother or sister. No matter what he says, no matter what he does, it is me. I am taking full responsibility for what is coming out of my mouth. Uh, so as we will be meeting in the future every hour from 4 to 5, uh, every Sunday from 4 to 5, I am looking forward to building this relationship with you where you uh, c communicate with me and we, we, we talk about ways in which we can um, brainstorm powerful strategies so that we can share this not just within ourselves, not with our families, but not with our communities. Uh, as a Muslim, Today we are facing very challenging times. There's a lot of blame, there's a lot of shame, and there's a lot of judgment upon us. How do we overcome this? There are many ways, but today my goal is to empower you to do that through the vehicle of communication. So we spoke about moving away from the four Ds of dysfunctional communication. Where when we move away from that, we are ready to communicate. And there will be challenges still. So I want you to ask yourself, let's say you are in a contentious conversation with somebody. It could be a spouse, it could be a child, it could be a co-worker at home, or it could be somebody who is from another faith. What do you, what do you have to do before you say something? I say, pass it through the filters, these four filters. First, ask yourself, do I really have to say this? Very important. We have all our lifetime to communicate. Uh, we don't necessarily have to say everything we have to say in one breath. And that's what happens when we don't get along with people. So ask yourself, do I have to say this? If it's a no, don't rush to it. Okay? Then ask yourself, can I say this with kindness? Okay? If, that, if, if you're not sure, don't say it. Then ask yourself, will this strengthen our relationship? That's very important. What is it we are here for unless we don't build relationships with one another? That is crucial. 
I think it's very important to communicate kindly so that we can stay in that relationship. Uh, then you have to ask the fourth, fourth question uh, you're going to ask is, can it be said nicely? Okay. Do I have to rethink the strategy? Do I have to say this a little later? Maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, maybe next week. Uh, we have all our lifetime to communicate because words can hurt. Uh, words can hurt. So in order for us to stay communicating in a, in a way that connects us, we want to learn to run these questions through these filters. Do I have to say it? Maybe not. Then don't say it. Okay, I have a um, caller. As Assalamu alaikum, this is Soraya. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sister Soraya? I am doing very well, thank you. Thank you for your call. Thank you very much for your beautiful, beautiful program. Really, we need um, some kind of programs like that. Uh, we, we have just like a uh, lack of communication between the community, between wife and husband, between the leader and the, 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 the his people and the society. We, we, we have really, we have to communicate. We have to, to create like what you just said, a dialogue between each other to, to uh, really to get that success. You know, if we read the Quran, like you just said right now, we're going to have very good and strong relationship between the community, like what I said, between the father and his children, between the, the wife and the husband, between the hakim and mahkum, everybody, you know. So please inspire us with your advices, and I know you have a lot of education, a lot of, uh, mashallah, knowledge about that, and uh, congratulations for your program, and I hope everybody asks you a question to uh, learn from you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah. uh, uh, that was uh, uh, talking about the value of communication again. Yes, as the caller just said, we, as the caller just said, we have to build this in our community. We, when we are strong, when we are together, nobody can come between us. Uh, I think today in my travels, I've traveled right across the United States. Uh, teaching people these skills. What I see is I have never seen the Muslim Ummah come together in this strength of unity um, to come together for a purpose because we know that we are hurting and we know that we want to be seen. Um, uh, what we have today is unarmed truth. We know what Islam talks about peace and we know as a Muslim what our role is in that peacemaking. So I know we have come together as a community and it is for us to decide what issues uh, we, we have to deal with. We don't want uh, someone from outside to tell us what is wrong with us. It is for us to take a deep look at our community and see where is it that we can make this right. And there are many ways in which we can make things right. But today, my focus today is to empower you with a style of communication, with a style of a language that will help you speak kindly to somebody that will help you be seen not just as a listener but somebody who hears the person it's very important that we hear what the other person has to say not just listen uh, so today my goal is to empower you uh, to do that and I, I would love for you to hear from you give me your call uh, and we'll talk about issues that are common in your community in your home and we'll see how we can take the next step and we can expand our thinking and build a skill set to create a better world for you, for our children and for the children of the world. Do you have gum problem? We at Azim Dental can help you with laser gum therapy. Are you missing a tooth? Is it too embarrassing to smile? Dental implants can be the solution. Do you need braces? We here at Azim Dental offer braces. Come schedule your free consultation now and receive 30% off your treatment. We also offer payments with no interest.
If you have PPO insurance and you need treatment, you'll receive a free whitening with no charge. We here at Azim Dental can save you thousands. Located in North Hollywood. Salam alaikum, I'm Dr. Azim. If you have any problem, me and my staff would love to help you. California Nutrition Distributors is a wholesale distributor of power bars, protein shakes, healthy snacks, kettle chips, and hundreds of other nutritional products. CND provides the highest quality nutrition supplements with 100 of brands and flavors to many gas stations and markets in all over Los Angeles and Orange County. We offer a full service including pricing, organizing, free delivery, and a 100% product guarantee. CND is a family-owned business working with you for you. Call us at 818-919-4382. جيريكو جميع أنواع الحمص والمقبلات الشرقية جيريكو المنتج الطازج لجميع أنواع الحمص غنية بالفيتامينات الطبيعية جيريكو قريبا في الأسواق جميع أنواع الكنافة النابلسية جيريكو الطعم الأصلي منتجتنا حلال جيريكو تجدونها في جميع البقالات العربية والمحلية <تصفيق> Are you looking to purchase a home but worried about the loan process? If so, here is the man who can put your mind at ease, Sabri Mahmood of Pinnacle Estate Properties. Sabri is an active member of the Muslim community and can help you acquire Islamic-approved loan financing. If you already own your home, but are one of the thousands of homeowners today who are losing sleep at night because you now owe more than you could sell for, Sabri has answers for you as well. Are you facing foreclosure? Considering a short sale? Do you need advice on lowering your mortgage or modifying your loan? Sabri can offer you the benefits of his many years of real estate experience. He has a strong connection to the concerns of your religious community. Sabri is ready and willing to help you achieve your dreams. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. Uh, I think technology has never been this easier for us to learn in the comfort of our living rooms. So this afternoon, as I promised, uh, I want to uh, introduce uh, our special guest all the way from Palestine. Etaf Awad is from Dubaria, uh, a village in the north of the Galilee near Nazareth. Uh, she has served 26 years as the city manager of Dubaria and advisor for women's affairs at the local council. Itaf Award has been committed to women's empowerment, community development, and conflict resolution for over 30 years. Uh, she teaches that within each person, there exists an innate wisdom that promotes growth and healing. Through the use of communication and conflict resolution tools, Itaf helps people get in touch with this simple and powerful wisdom. Uh, please help us uh, help me welcome my friend and uh, peacemaker Itaf Awad. Assalamu alaikum Itaf. Wa alaikum. 
Um, sister Saraya. Thank Welcome. you so much. Thank you so much for coming uh, to our studio this afternoon. Uh, it's a joy uh, to see you back again. Uh, tell us, please, uh, what brings you back to California uh, this year? Uh, first of all, assalamu alaikum and thank you. You are invite me to be uh, the first guest in uh, your program. Really, I feel gratitude uh, to be here. And I came this time, I get invitation from the Brave Heart Women, it's organization in, uh, in California, in US, and they are work with the women and uh, they want to have a program in Israel, Palestine uh, for peace to bring uh, women together. And I, this is my work, I did this work since 2003 or since 2000, uh, after the second uh, intifada, and I take uh, responsibility uh, to do something uh, different and to bring the people uh, to, together. And also, as a Palestinian live in uh, live in Israel, and I have Israeli nationality, and also we, you know, about the conflict, and we have uh, it is still the occupation, and it is still no peace, and the people they are talking about the peace, but they are they didn't talking about justice, and it's to feel victim. And for me, I. Um, I stopped to feel victim mm. and I have the right to live in justice and peace. And also I believe every human being in the world deserve to live in peace right. and justice right. and in and safety yes. and dignity. So what you're saying is that you take full responsibility for yourself, how you feel, what you do and what you think. Uh, yes. Yes. So uh, I know that we live hundreds of thousands of miles away and we talk about peace. We're really not seeing the conflict. And you see this firsthand every day. So tell me, what is it that gives you the hope to go along and continue with the work you're doing? Uh, really, what's given me the hope, it's, um, I believe it's the peace start. In, start in myself right. and I start uh, the steps it's me to live in peace in in myself and uh, uh, in the beginning I was very angry and I was a uh, political active and when I work in the local municipality as an advisor for women fears and also I work at the, as a manager in the local council and I was uh, very angry and very active and uh, and also uh, from the place like uh, uh, to survive, mm -hmm. uh, fight and flight. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, when in 2003 I involved uh, uh, to the uh, way of the council, mm -hmm. its way of uh, uh, communication or way of life, okay. how to listen to your needs and how to listen uh, to your heart and how we can have patience and compassion uh, to the other. And uh, since uh, this time I practice uh, this way and this way uh, really they are change uh, my life and they are help me to have the power, my uh, power and uh, to communicate with the with the with the, the other right wonderful yes i've seen you conducting these workshops called the way of the council and i've been impressed i've gone home and practiced and incorporated in my life what you have been teaching so i'm wondering if you're willing to share with our audience today shall we do a little role play uh, like how do you do the way of the council let's say for instance uh, i see you and i say something really mean to you hey tough i just don't like you you're not good enough how do you uh, how will you respond to my judgment of you it's uh, first first of all we are a, a practice the way of the council it's to listen from the heart mm. and be compassion right and it's meaning it's, it doesn't mean I am agree with you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's just I be patient and listening from my heart and I didn't take uh, what you said I didn't take it like uh, I'm not judge you and I practice this 
Right. Not to judge you and not to be judgmental and blame you. Okay. And I didn't take it personality. Okay. And okay, so yes. what you're saying is, when I said this to you, you just was listening to me with your heart. You didn't think, oh my God, she's saying this. You didn't think like that. You just took in what I said. You're not owning what I said. Yes, okay. and and this is it's not. I'm not uh, like I am not an angel, and okay. I'm not. But we are be. We, what we are practice in the way of the council, it's we bring the, be aware okay. all the time and bring the consciousness yes. to this. And this is a practice every day, every day. And when I am really be angry and then I say yes and I take a deep breath and then I be aware what's happened to me, why I am uh, angry I'm to go not to judge you and to to blame you and uh, and most of the problem with the with the family it's, it's we can we didn't know how to relate and how we didn't know how to communicate with each with the, each other because we didn't know how to relate right, uh, right. and it's the way of the council it's we are um, sit in a, a circle uh -huh. together it's we are in the same level okay and all of us in the same and it's the power of the circle it's we are build safety and the trust okay so wh what about if there's no circle but there's only two people can we still do the council uh, yes. yes how do we do that yes we it, it's the same thing we okay are, so we sit uh, opposite we each are, other we sit w with each other and uh, we can have and we and this is the way of the council. It's coming from the uh, Native American traditional, but I research, and this is it's in all the uh, all that traditional and any culture. They have this. The people they are sit mm. around the fire and they are sh share stories from their experience. Mm. And when we are sit, me and you, we can share stories. And from our experience, and I am not uh, inter interrupt you, and uh, I am nothing uh, give you advice. And mm -hmm. when when you are talking about something, and you didn't get uh, advice, and also when you can open uh, your heart and build a trust in 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 a community, and we mm -hmm. say this is the way to build a community. I hear you when you are talking mm -hmm. in a in the half hour before we talk about the build a community, and then and when you build a community, everybody they have a voice, and mm -hmm. this is the way of the council. Also, it's talking about to build a community and they build community, and everybody they have voice because mm -hmm. we are. A, a, a pass a token piece and everybody they have the token piece mm. and he is a leader of the group and he is talking right and it's um, and this is the, the like tools in the way of the council and i say we how we build the format and the the uh, the trust in a way of council we practice of its five intention I see. The first five intentions. Five intention okay. is the f one intention. It's to uh, talking from the heart. Okay. I talk my truth. Okay. And the second, it's listen from the heart. Okay. I listen uh, from from all my body. Okay. And uh, the third intention, we are talk spontaneous, and the spontaneous, it's like uh, the heart. They haven't planned. Okay. And uh, uh, then uh, sometimes you uh, surprise yourself. Right. Just when you have a talking piece, just don't think about something and you can share mm -hmm. what's come and what's it's present right now, mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for intention, it's to be lean. To be lean, it's to bring the essence of the story. In, in everybody, they have voice in the circle and they have voice in, in main time and to bring himself and to bring his voice. And the for intention, it, it to build the trust and the respect. Right. And right. this is 
work outside the circle right. to build the confidentiality. Okay. So what you would you agree then that every enemy, every person we don't is whom we don't know. So when we sit like this, when we share our story from our heart without thinking and spontaneously, we can build a relationship. Yes, mm-hmm. and and I have a lot of stories from my experience when I work with a, a different people and with the Israeli women and also I had experience last time when I work with uh, wow it's so hard uh, when we had a very hard time you know we cannot mm-hmm. meet and we cannot see each other and because we are uh, both of us we are practice the way of the council and I haven't fear to tell my friends what I am feeling mm-hmm. like I told him right now I cannot meet you mm-hmm. and then she's respect me and accept mm-hmm. this yes and uh, and the uh, after that we can have time right. and we sit in in council right. and we share a, a story right. and we share right. what so, we are yeah, feeling. so let me then make this really clear what you're saying is that we can have the worst of disagreements but if we have the intention we can come together and we can talk about it maybe not now but later yes okay so what, what you're saying is that you you teach people to do that I I teach it's it's not teaching I'm not teach the people I am remind them remind. Okay. I am remind them because everybody I say everybody and every uh, human uh, uh, any traditional they have this in their culture and I research this yes and it's the first thing the first teacher of us as uh-huh. a Muslim it's the prophet uh, Muhammad uh, وسلم, and also in the Quran in the Quran they have a surah in surah al-a'raf وإذا قرأ القرآن فاستمعوا له وانصتوا لعلكم ترحمون mm-hmm. It's when the Quran is read uh, he, hear and listen uh-huh. and maybe you get mercy from God wow. and they, it's different between to hear and to have deep listening when you are deep listener the other they can open the heart Yes. for you and not to give advice and not to blame and not to judge them and also with we always we have a, a lot of prejudice and a lot of thing and just to be and it is really is a simple way and the, always I say the the miracle in this way it's how it is simple Okay, so sister, um, could you please tell us your email and your website because I feel I need to go back home and uh, go back to your website and get all these nuggets because it's powerful. I mean, we can every day reinvent ourselves, rejuvenate ourselves and recommit ourselves. I mean, who is it, who is in this world who does not need a better way to communicate, a better way to be listened to? So would you please share with the audience your website? Uh, my website it's uh, www.etafawad.com i t a f a w a d.com and uh, my emails uh, etaf.awad at gmail.com yes i know uh, i know that you were flown in especially from palestine for an event where they were uh, they had put together 700 uh, women from all over the world 700 powerful peacemakers and i'm so honored that you are with me today you were one of those peacemakers uh, so uh, could you then just tell us is there a story you want us to remember uh, a special thing i know you gave us those five principles that's phenomenal uh, something uh, for uh, the younger generation because my work is all about empowering women uh, empowering mothers uh, to empower their children because peacemaking really begins in our homes uh, so if if you do you have a powerful special special message for our younger listeners and mothers of course for mothers it's just when your child came from the school and they want to share with you uh, what's happened with him in the school uh, and uh, just really be a, a empathy vessel and uh, listen to him don't give him advance and 
always we are jumping and we give our children advance. Mm -hmm. Even me, I practice counsel and I practice the deep listening mm -hmm. and always I need to remind myself and it's, I will tell you a story just last time, it's yes. happened to me uh -huh. with my with my nephew. Okay. He talk, he, I sit with him and he talk with me about uh, something important for me, for him and he shared dream for me about, he, he is a 22 and he want to, to have business and then he start to tell me the color and the things of the the place and his studio he want to have and it's I then I look to him I, I told him you what about your study you <laughs> didn't want to go to study uh -huh. and then he looked to me and he feel like this he he really wanted to cry and he told me wow I talk with you and then you in the end you told me and this is my fear I talk from my fear and yes. always we are, it's my needs. And always as a mother and also as a parent, we have a fear and we have our, um, uh, our needs. And then we talk and we react from our needs and just not uh, to hurry to react. Mm. Be patient and uh, compassion. Right. Right. Thank you so much. I, I always say to my audience, 80% of our of our actions are based on fear. We do something because we are afraid something might not be right. And also, I'm sure you know that uh, more than 8,000 thoughts we have in a day, of which 75% of those thoughts are negative. So when we come from this programming from a very young age, we need to expand our thinking. We need to think different. We need to do different and we need to be different. So therefore, uh, what you're saying is so